This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 108 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Enjoy today's tip. Glenn the Geek back here with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and you're listening to Horse Tip Daily. Just wanted to give you a reminder about next week, which is Christmas week, that we will be putting three shows out that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then taking the rest of the holiday off. You know, and also I wanted to mention that on all the other shows, what we did, and we'll be playing that here on Wednesday as well, we had a get-together of all the hosts, uh, the permanent hosts for all the shows, Chris Stafford from Eventing and Dressage, Samantha Clark from the 2010 The Weg Show, and Helena B., my original co-host from The Stable Scoop Show. We all got together and spent an hour just sitting around chatting about the past year on the shows and what our highlights were and, and talking about Christmas and memories and that kind of thing. So I think you'll enjoy that show. We'll be playing it on Horse Tip Daily here on Wednesday, and we'll also be playing that same show on all the different shows. So you don't have to listen to more than one show next week. Uh, it'll all be the same unless you want to hear it over and over again. And, of course, you can hear all the shows on the network at horseradionetwork.com. Well, we have another new expert with us today to cover an area that we have not touched yet, literally or figuratively, and that is leather care. We have Betsy Cohen on with us today. She knows more about leather care than anyone I know. She works for Bickmore, which is one of the leading companies in the leather care business, and Betsy has been working with them for over 10 years and is just a delightful lady. Let's say hi to Betsy. Well, hi, Betsy, and welcome to your first Horse Tip Daily. Well, hey, thanks for having me. It's going to be wildly exciting. It's going to be fun. You know, we do have fun doing these little shows, and and they become unbelievably popular, which just blows me away, why anybody would want to listen to me jabber on every day. But uh, but they listen to me because I have really cool experts like you on. Oh, excellent. And I've always wanted to be popular, so I kind of missed that whole shtick in high school. So here's my new opportunity. Now you're popular and an expert. You've got both now together. (laughs) So you work with Bickmore, and tell us a little bit about Bickmore. Bickmore is an old company. We've been around 127 years. I've been there 10 years. And basically our whole job in life, or what we consider our job, is to make premium products at reasonable prices. So we might not be the fanciest out there. Uh, We don't do the most advertising. Um, You're not going to find us in every magazine and and everywhere, but big picture, you're not going to find better care products out there. We we are the best. I tell you, my wife, who's in the retail business, just loves your products. And um, she, uh, she, especially like you do leather care, you do horse health care products, you do grooming products. She really likes those grooming wipes. They are pretty wonderful. We are very excited about it, and we just would like the the rest of the world to jump on board and figure it out. Well, you know? I want to ask you more about the grooming wipes then towards the end of this tip, uh, because I do have a question for you about those. Uh, but you, you also do hat care products. What the heck's a hat care product? Uh, hat care, it's for the western end of the world, and basically they oh, it's for my spend... cowboy hat? Absolutely. Oh. Some of those cowboys spend quite a bit of money on their horses, their saddles, and their hats. They'll so... spend 500 bucks on their hats. Um, or more. And then they go trash bucks. them in the dirt. <laughs> they do. But, you know, a really fine hat will, will keep keep going and going and going. And so um, we do protectants, stain and water protectants. We do some cleaners. We do some brushes and sponges and, and you know, just a lot of different cleaners and, and things that keep them looking fabulous because there's nothing sexier than a man in a hat. You even sell hat stiffener, which I'm not even going to go there. There's so many jokes that I'm not even <laughs> I didn't know there were this many products for hats. (laughs) Oh, there are lots of products out there that a lot of people don't know about. (laughs) All right. All right. So what are we talking about today? Food for thought. You know, all these people are being so conscientious about looking at the label of their food, but they never turn over a bottle of their leather care and read the label. And that's food for your leather. And, you know, for a long time I was riding some pretty young and stupid horses And, wow, if my tack wasn't holding together really well, that could have been pretty dangerous. So feeding your leather right, and and I don't care if it's fine leather, tack, harness, apparel, footwear, furniture, whatever, by feeding it right, you're going to help maintain the product integrity and the safety. Okay. Um, And 
and specifically speaking about TAC, when you take good care of it, you're going to help increase its value or hold its value. You're going to extend the longevity. You're going to reduce wear and tear and reduce repairs. So people love buying TAC from me after I've used it for a while because I'll buy something that's kind of been used and abused and neglected, and by the time I'm done big fouring it every time I ride, it's in great condition, and they're like, wow, a new saddle isn't even this nice, so I can always get my money back out of it. And that's pretty important when you've got, you know, I had an old $400 saddle that I ended up selling for 700 bucks because, you know, I had sent it back, had gotten it reflocked, the stitching was in perfect condition, everything was good on it. So, you know, it's if you take care of it, that two minutes every time you ride Now, I'd we'll, venture we'll to say, back. what, about 50% of the people don't, or maybe more, I've been in a lot of barns. And, I was uh, say, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, say maybe, more than that. maybe 75% of the people don't take very good care of their leather products. And, and I, I don't know, it, you know, it, one, it's probably laziness. Two, two, they may not know how to do it properly or, or they've been taught how to do it. I would say laziness is probably the biggest one, wouldn't you? Uh, absolutely. And, and the other thing is there are people who are very conscientious about cleaning it but are doing it wrong. Huh. So it's, you know, all of their efforts are actually being counterproductive, and that's a problem as well. So you say, take a look at what's at the bottle, but how do I know what's good? Well, you you pay more attention to what's bad. And okay. if you can stay away from the bad things, that is usually the better way about going about it. So first thing, petroleum distillates. Big, bad, scary word. You don't want that on your leather. You don't want it near your stitching. Um, so... Petroleum distillates are, are mineral oils, petrol atom, and usually a product has to say on the back that it contains petroleum distillates. Okay. So that's a bad thing. You want to keep away from that. And petroleum I don't care. Petroleum bad. Like, yes, okay. bad, bad, bad. Um, waxes. You know, so many of these leather cleaners are talking about, you know, they, they tout that in their ingredient list, hey, we have carnauba wax, beeswax. Wax when used in moderation, shining shoes, that kind of stuff is great. Wax as, an, as a care product all the time, every day, or, or in a regular leather care regime, clogs pores. The pores are clogged. Wax is always a little bit sticky, especially when it gets warm. When you're riding in that leather saddle, you know, the reins, they're getting warm, so that leather is getting wet, or the, the wax is making it it's getting warm. And basically, it's going further into the leather. It's pulling the dirt because it's sticky further into the leather. And basically, dirt in leather is bad. Those are little tiny boulders that are going through cutting all those fibers and and basically damaging the leather and, and wrecking the integrity of the piece. And it's just like your car. You don't wax it every time you wash it. And, exactly right. Yeah. And you know um, what? I, wax does build up, I mean, on anything. Uh, it absolutely yeah. does. And then sometimes I like the people who use the spray waxes or the shellacs or lacquers. Mm -hmm. And basically it looks like one of those fabulous diamonds you find, you know, for, you know, two carat diamond tennis bracelet for, you know, $99. And it looks like frozen spit. Yeah. It looks like you've got frozen <laughs> spit on your black boots because it's all crackled looking. And I'm just like, that's not good. That's not a shiny boot. So stay away from that frozen spit. All look. right. No frozen spit either. Yeah, that's right. Um, another big bad one is silicone. You know, basically, silicone is in a lot of the leather protectants and repellents. That acts like a plastic coating. And basically, that plastic coating, what do we love about leather? Leather breathes. When you put a plastic bag over that, i.e. the silicone coating, you are not allowing that leather to breathe. So your feet are going to sweat more. So sweat is salty. Salt is a drying agent. So you're rotting your boots from the inside out. Also, okay, you've just sprayed them with that silicone. Now you want to go put conditioner on it? If it's not letting water in and, and, all, and it's not letting air out, you actually think it's going to allow that leather conditioner to get into the leather? Nope. It's, it's making a barrier. So silicones are bad, 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 bad. All right, no silicones. Right. And they were bad in another favorite... use, too, by the way. But uh... <laughs> yes, yes, they were, but I think they fixed that now. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, my favorite one, I do a lot of consumer trade shows, and I hear all sorts of interesting things. And what I love and I hear about all the time is salad dressings. Oh, yeah, I'm not spending all that money on, on leather care. I don't mind dropping a couple grand on a saddle, but, you know, I'm not going to buy, you know, $10 leather care. I'm just going to go and buy olive oil or canola oil or Western mm -hmm. oil. Yep. Guys, that is great on salads. 
great for your heart, not so good on your leather. So keep your salad dressings on leafy greens. I'm not putting manure on my salad. Keep the salad dressing off the horse, off the tick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> a really good, you know, a good rule of thumb is anything that leaves a residue is bad for leather. So salad dressings, that heavy oils, that sort of thing, are going to leave an oily residue. They're going to dull the leather. They're going to leave it tacky. Anytime you have a residue, residue is bad. Residue attracts dirt, grows bacteria that causes damage to the leather, the stitching. And, and you know, the saddles are a lot of money. And you need to protect your investment, especially in this environment, you know, economic environment. So take good care. Leather should feel just like it did when it was new, other than a little softer, a little more supple, a little more broken in. But it shouldn't be sticky, shouldn't be tacky, shouldn't be dull. A nice, warm, rich yumminess is what you're looking for when you have tech. Great. Well, what's can I can I ask what, what what would be the main ingredient like in your in your leather care products? What are the can you name a couple of the good ingredients? Um, we can't talk about ingredients on the Bicmore products, okay. um, specifically the Bic Four and the Bic One, just because so many people have tried knocking us off over ah. the years. That, that's protected. However, but it doesn't have any you, of those bad ones. It doesn't have any waxes, okay. silicones, gotcha. petroleum distillates. No salad dressing in there. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and what? How are Bic 4 specifically is different from everyone else's, is ours is what the tanners use to tan leather. So basically, you're putting back in what the tanners originally put in to make the leather soft, supple, and wonderful right from the get-go when you're buying it from the store. So when you put it on your saddle, it's not going to darken it. It doesn't leave a residue. It's not sticky after you're done. And, and it just makes the leather feel good. It's not too slippery, so you're not going to have to worry about slipping on a saddle if your young one is romping and frolicking in the corner. You know, it's just putting the emollients back in and feeding the leather. All right. I, cl- I ride five days a week. My saddle is clean five days a week. My stitching is fine. You, you can't overuse it. It's not like some other products where if you use too much, you're going to have, you know, a floppy loose saddle that you know you can't right. put the body back into you know our leather care is good on your car interior your couches your leather jackets your your purses your footwear you know always test an inconspicuous area obviously for you know check for color fastness but basically you don't have to worry about putting it in your car interior and then getting out with a greasy bum yeah which is a, a problem exactly right <laughs> you know big four is a great product and it's safe for just about everything. You All know, right, our sure. cleaner out there, very aggressive, not gentle on leather, not pH balanced, but it does the job. And when used appropriately, it cleans leather quickly and effectively. You know, again, Bickmore's whole goal is to make effective premium quality products for a reasonable price. And you can find those products at Bickmore.com. That's B-I-C-K-M-O-R-E.com. And I noticed something on your website, too. Sign up for free Bickmore product. Absolutely. If they go there and they click on that little star, it goes to another site, and they have to send me an email, um, usually telling me where they heard about this and basically giving me their mailing address, not a P.O. box. I can't ship anything to a P.O. box. And we will send them a Four ounce sample of our new Bic Five, which is a spray on leather lotion. So that's a pretty cool product in that the Bic Five is a thick and rich formula, stays where you put it. So I have a tendency to clean my tack when it's still on the horse. And so basically I'll squirt it on there and instead of having, you know, glycerin and that kind of stuff drip off and, you know, land on my horse's side. It stays right where I put it so I can work it into the leather and get that dirt and grime off. And that's good through the end of this year. So get your requests in soon. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, Betsy. We appreciate you being on. Will you come back again and and, uh, help us out some more in our leather care and, and horse care? Absolutely. I'm always happy to help, and it's a joy to talk with you, Glenn. All right. Thanks, Betsy. Thank you. Well, thanks again to Betsy. We really appreciate her being on today. And you can find all Betsy's links at horsetipdaily.com. Just take a look on the left in the drop-down menu for experts and look for Betsy Cohen. And you'll find her bio with all the links on there. Remember, you can drop me an email at glenn with two N's at horseradionetwork.com. And a reminder, don't forget to check out all the great shows on the network at horseradionetwork.com. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, stay safe, everyone.